Oh boy, back at it again with another physical review, not a stop motion review this time, on Origins Wheeljack, the Target exclusive that literally just came out like a week ago. Got my grimy little hands on this through the mail on Target. I pre-ordered it when it first dropped a few weeks ago in March, and now it is in my possession. So, yeah, let's talk about this guy. He's pretty good. Uh, you could plug in the Earthrise Wheeljack arm cannon there. He can't hold it for some reason. So, uh, well, there's a reason for it. Because the peg is, isn't is long enough and the forearms are too thicky thick for the peg to go through fully into the hand, as you can see there. So, yeah, that really sucks. But I'll show you guys a comparison and stuff like that with those, uh, the Earthrise Wheeljack and others in a little bit. He's got the gun... Uh, which he could hold in his hand, and he could mount on his shoulder, obviously. It's cool. It's a little small, but, you know, it does the trick. I think it looks better than the Earthrise one, but I feel like it could have been a little bit bigger, too. So, yeah, he could hold them in both hands. He could plug them into the ports on the side of the arms. Got the port there. Uh, I tried to see if he could do the look where he could mount this on there and have them with a handheld gun, but no. Nope. Just how with how big this thing is and where the peg is located, you cannot do that, so that really sucks. He's just got the shoulder cannon, which he is, does look barren. I mean, he's got nothing else to hold. Uh, so it would have been nice if he came with another gun, but hey, it is what it is. I can't complain too much, honestly. But in terms of the look and the details of it, it's really nice. I do like it. And a lot of nice sculpted details. Decent paint. Uh, you can store these uh, rod things back here. There's little 3mm ports there. But you can just plug them onto the arm where it's supposed to be for uh, van mode. So you can just leave them there. But I prefer to leave it on the back because it looks cleaner in robot mode to me. But there's an option with that. And you can also plug these onto the gun. Because it is a uh, port there for blast effects as well. It's kind of snug, but there you go. You could do that, which is pretty, pretty cool. Not too shabby. And like I said, you can plug in blast effects too, as always with guns since Siege. So you got that going on, which is really dope. Not a whole lot of paint on him, but where there is paint, it does make the figure look pretty good. The, the You see more of the paint in... Uh, uh, van mode, so there's not really a whole lot in robot mode, but there is a lot on the head sculpt here Taking a look at this delicious thing The eyes, they're dark blue, but they do pop under the right lighting The silver is dope, the gray on top of the head is nice and shiny uh, So yeah, this is a really good head sculpt I might prefer this better than the Earthrise head sculpt, I'm not sure But yeah, this is probably the best or one of the best generations wheeljack head sculpts we've ever gotten I, I love this thing now in terms of the articulation obviously he is kibbly there's a lot of kibble on his lower legs and on the back of him but it doesn't really hinder it too much there is another complaint i have with this thing i wish uh, some of these kibble joints weren't pinned in so you could remove it similarly to the buzzworthy bumblebee from a couple years ago because none of those kibble parts were pinned in so you could remove it to have a clean look for Bumblebee. I thought they were going to do the same thing here with Wheeljack, but it seems like they just wanted to utilize the Voyager class budget with him, which I do understand because there's also a lot of people that complain, oh, why didn't you pin these in? It's a Voyager class paying $35. I understand that, but I mean, come on. It, w it really would have been nice, especially for somebody like me who's a photographer and a stop motioner who actually creates art and stories in visual representations with these things it would have been nice to get a cleaner look where you could remove the backpack remove some of the excess leg kibble it would have been nice but anyway with the articulation got a ball joint in there so you could get the head looking up a little bit like that and looking down a tiny bit you got some head tiltage there for some expressions you could rotate and i dropped one of the rods from the pack uh, for the arms, you got pretty much a full 360. You just got to watch out there. Outwards, that much. You got bicep swivel. 90 degrees there for the arm. 
You got wrist, swivel, and you could rotate this downward a little bit if you want. Wheeljack wielding a sword of some sort. You got that little piece of articulation, which is kind of cool. Uh, you got waist rotation, legs kick forward that much, back that much. You got uh, thigh cut there. You got a tiny bit more than 90 degrees of knee bend. And there's another locking joint in here. Uh, but it doesn't it's it doesn't feel tight enough to the point where you're gonna break the plastic over time So I wouldn't really worry about that too much and then with the feet you got a lot of articulation here You got a ball joint and a hinge joint up top so you can get it going up a crap ton and down a crap ton too And then of course ankle tilt absolutely beautiful. So yeah, he's got some pretty good articulation uh, it would have been nice if there was a butterfly joint in there or some sort of ab crunch, but with the way he transforms, I totally understand why. Oh, and the other accessory, I forgot to show this off. It counts as like, so the rod things are two accessories, the gun is one accessory, then it, the Hasbro counts this as three separate accessories because it could come apart on these uh, mushroom peg joints here. But I did it a couple times, and because of it being clear plastic, there's already freaking stress marks on the joints there. So I'm not going to do it again. But you got these joints right here and hinges. You could maneuver it a different way for the wing flight mode thing because you got two ports right there. And you got tabs right here that lock it in. And you could... Uh, have this wing thing for a jetpack or whatever. It's pretty stupid. This is this accessory piece is really just one piece, honestly, and it's just the shield protector thing in van mode from the cartoon. So that's really honestly all it's for. But you can do that, which eh, it is what it is. It's kind of stupid to me, but not too bad. I like the color of the blue. There's some nice sculpted details within the clear plastic, which is pretty cool. You can also hold the Energon rods that came with Origins Bumblebee in uh, robot mode and vehicle mode. You got these ports right here, and they just slot right in there, so you can store them all. Jesus, what's up with the cat hair? Come on, kitty, stop messing with my Transformers. So you can plug it in like that with those ports, and I think I lost the fourth Energon rod, or the I think it came with five, maybe? So <laughs> I was only able to find three. So there's that. Pretty cool. And now for size comparisons, let's bring in here his Origins buddies. We got Jazz and Bumbla Biha. So there's that. Looking pretty cool. I love this. This is what Siege should have been. Maybe minus the, the accuracy for the show where it's the Earth robot modes with the with the Cybertronian modes just to save extra kibble hanging on these guys. But yeah, these are still great to me. I love these figures. And let's bring in Huffer and Earthrise Wheeljack. For some comparisons, there's that. And yeah, these two totally different figures. Head sculpts, totally different. I don't know. I think I prefer the new one. Uh, but this old one is still pretty great, too. Now, let's bring in Optimus and Megatron for the last of the comparisons. Here is Earthrise Optimus. And here is Siege Megatron. I never bought the Earthrise because that one is even worse than this figure. And y'all know me. I'm not the biggest fan of this mold. So there's that. Now, for transformation, this guy is really complex because he's essentially a deluxe scale figure in as a Voyager class. And obviously with how he's designed, Earth mode, robot mode, and Cybertronian vehicle mode, it it's pretty dynamic. So what you're going to do is take these out if you stored them here, take the gun off, untab this backpack, untab it from his shoulder wings as well, and just leave that there and just get it out of the way for now. So you got it like that. And what you're going to do is flip this piece out. Flip the hands in there. What's going on here? Oh, oh, oh yeah. You got to rotate the hand that way. And then rotate it in there. 
and then just leave it like that. Same thing on this side. And then you take the shoulder wings and you rotate them inward like that. And then you really gotta work with the legs because that's where most of the mass is stored. So you untab this section here, rotate it out, flip it up. You untab that section there and then rotate that out. And then you rotate that around. So you got <laughs> this whole mess going on here. And then same thing on this side. And then once you got that, you rotate the waist around. So you got that. And then you untab this piece. And then you rotate it up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to rotate the feet around. And then this dip section right here is going to go into that dip there. So just use that joint and it stores right there. Same thing on this side. Take the headpiece, untab it, and then shimmy it downward like this. And then this is pretty cool. You got to break the legs here to create extra an, a wider frame and extra mass for the van to fit Bumblebee inside of it. Then you tab all that together like that. You just got to start tabbing all these panels to the roof of the van mode. So... This is kind of hard to do on camera because it's a lot of tabs and a lot of shimmying, but uh, it's easier than it looks because <laughs> you got to line everything up. So yeah, once you've got everything painstakingly lined up, you just tab it all together and then it'll look like that. Do the same thing on the other side. And then what you do now is you take the arms here and you got to bend them on the inward joint, not the outward elbow joint. So it's like this, and they basically tab into each other, like that. And then they tab into the side part here, like that. And make sure everything is nice and neat. Close this back part up. It's kind of tough to do. Oh crap, I did that. So once you got the back section closed, I like to come around back here. I rotate the head. You don't really have to do this, but I just like to do it to conceal the head. And then you untab the chest section there. And it's going to lock in to these holes. And then there's the ports there. Now they're here. Jesus, cats. And then that just locks in right there. So yeah, it just looks cleaner when you rotate the head. Take the rods, plug them in here. So you got that look going on. Take the gun, plug it up top there for some weaponizer action. And there you go. It's all done. And I think it looks really, really cool. I love this van mode. The Cybertronian mode is so cool. And they even made like a kind of a stand for it. These ports and then the front ports there. It allows it to stand up so it's not like wobbling too much and it doesn't like dip forward or dip backwards so i thought that was pretty cool engineering uh, on hasbro's part so yeah this looks really really good and he's big this is like it's a deluxe scale robot mode but with a voyager scale uh car mode so yeah it's really big clear plastic is inserts it's not uh, all over the place on the figure, which is great. They're really utilizing that Voyager class budget. Uh, you can still store the rods on the side there like that. So that's pretty cool. And to store Bumblebee on the inside, you just open this compartment up. Again, it's really tough to do, but you got that going on, which is really cool how they were able to do that. So when you take Bumblebee, you got to transform the back sections there like that so you can fit in. And you just slide them on in there. Gotta, oh, I forgot you gotta open that up. Uh, you just put them on in. Close that piece up. And boom, got that all closed up. You can see Bumblebee there and right there. It's not perfect. You gotta finagle it a little bit and you gotta mistransform Bumblebee a little bit there. But it is pretty cool that they were able to do this with a deluxe class scale Wheeljack with a Voyager class scale van mode. So my final thoughts on Wheeljack here. I think he's really good, especially for like a deluxe scale Voyager and how they engineered him and how they were able to be able to fit Bumblebee inside there and create all that extra space and cavity in there with engineering. I think it is 
really genius, all things considered. Uh, the kibble is a bit annoying. I do wish you could have removed it like what you could do with Bumblebee here. Um, the shield accessory piece, which I actually forgot to show this off again. Here you go. This is what you do. You fold it like that. You got some tabs on the side there and slots. And it just fits right over, locks in, and it looks like that. Which, it looks even cooler. I actually prefer it like this, which is, which is kind of funny that I forgot to show that off. But yeah, that looks really cool. I do like that. So there's that. Uh, the accessories aren't too bad. I wish it came with another gun. The shield accessory is okay. Uh, the rod pieces that come off are pretty cool. There's some options there with that. Uh, so all in all, I gotta give him maybe like an 8 out of 10. I think that's fair in my opinion. Uh, I would recommend getting this guy. All my social media is all linked down below. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. My email is also down below if y'all want to hit me up about business inquiries or if you want to message me about whatever. Or if you want to subscribe to my new Patreon, that is also linked down below. Got tons of exclusive content that you won't see anywhere else, such as exclusive stop motions, Transformers photography, uh, sneak peeks at my uh, uh, projects, such as my short films, dioramas, videos I'm working on, etc. Uh, music snippets, you guys get full-on tracks that you won't hear on any of my uh, short films or on YouTube at all. You guys get Discord access. You guys get access one week before everybody else here on YouTube to my stop motion short films. So yeah, a lot of cool stuff. Probably some other things I'm forgetting. But yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye!